Good morning, App Properties. Thank you for joining us today. It's Friday, April 3rd. I'm Amy Kaur, and I'm joined by Kevin Van Eck to bring you another episode of Coffee with Amy and Kevin. Morning, Kevin. Hey, good morning, Amy. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We've got a really good topic again today. We're getting a broker perspective uh, from one of our top producers, actually, who has a lot of experience and is always willing to share. So we're grateful for that. One of the things I want to point out is that what we're going to share today is applicable to everyone. We're all in different stages of our business, whether we're just getting started or if we've been in the business for 25 years and highly productive. What we're sharing today are really best practices that all of us can put into place so that we can become more efficient and ultimately more productive uh, through all the actions we take. So well, let's get right to it and introduce our special guest. Thanks, Kevin. Yep, so I'd like to welcome Amanda McMillan this morning and thank her for joining us for coffee and to talk productivity, which I think is a hot topic for so many brokers right now. Amanda, like many of you out there, has had to pivot her business very quickly in light of the changes that we're seeing with the coronavirus. So Amanda, thank you for taking the time to join us this morning. Thanks so much for having me. So I wanted to jump right in and I wanted to ask just an overall question. What are you seeing out there in the market right now? Well, obviously it's been a wild ride for all of us. Um, I feel like as a very generalized statement, uh, there's a very kind of bipolar reaction. Um, we're obviously seeing a tremendous amount of fear, emotion out of a lot of our clients, a lot of our colleagues, a lot of our family and friends. Um, there's people are scared, people are confused, and it's just unclear. I mean, we don't even understand or know how long this is going to stay in place, let alone how it's going to impact everything. So there is a lot of emotion on that front. On the other side of the equation, though, I do feel like I, I see a lot of people coming together and a tremendous amount of collaboration throughout different industries definitely real estate, but everywhere we look, we're seeing businesses are having to reinvent themselves and doing so in obviously a virtual way, but in a very much of a coming together. Uh, obviously, there's a tremendous amount of webinars happening. I see the museums all really releasing tours that you could walk through the museums. Uh, the kids' activities have gone through the roof. So I think that there's this, this underlying uh, unity that's coming out as well, and that's really showing the industries and the people within it that are really trying to position themselves as leaders. Uh, that's great. You mentioned emotions. You talk about confusion, but this isn't the first time where you've been in an instance like this. You've been through markets both up, down, flat. Uh, how is your mindset or how, you know, what has happened through your career during these times? That's a great question and one that I think has given me a lot of confidence as we're, as we're in these times. Um, the reality is, as I started my real estate career in the beginning of 2002, uh, if you figure out the timing, that was shortly after September 11th. Uh, so that was my first market in here. So that's when I came into this industry without knowing much, without knowing many people and really getting started. Um, and then if you fast forward, I obviously survived the, the crash of 2008. Now, the interesting thing is, is if I look back on my almost two decades of a career, the times that I saw the most amount of growth in my business was during those two times. So when this started to happen, once I wrapped my head around everything, I knew that the level of opportunity for growth in my personal business was once again reaching a, a point where we had that opportunity. In my, in my perspective, it's these challenged markets, these tougher times that really allow us to set the groundwork for our next growth spurt as individuals personally and as business people. So I looked at this and said, Yes, I have fears with what's going on. Yes, it's nerve wracking to um, try and figure out when my next sale is. But right now I have an opportunity to shine as a leader and I'm gonna take it. And I think that's so great because I think that is an opportunity for so many agents out there right now is to really take a leadership role in front of their clients and in front of their sphere of influence and, and just really help people move forward right now. So we've heard you talk at Expo on different panels and, you know, a bunch of different places, and it's clear you're someone with very consistent habits. What are the habits that have remained consistent even through this period of change right now? Well, in my mind, it's when we lose our normalcy, we have to set it. We have to make it happen. Um, so in my mind, our habits and our schedules have become more important than ever. It's the one way for us to kind of maintain consistently. Um, I know a lot of people out there, like myself, 
have children at home too. So now not only are we having to shift our businesses, um, become market leaders, homeschool our children. So there's so many different things going on that if we don't have a good plan in place, if we don't have a schedule in place, it, it's, it's no doubt to understand how a day passes by and you maybe have to compost nothing. So I've literally gone through and tried to figure out um, the things that we were previously doing, they get charted into what day they get done, how they get done. Obviously the new things that we're doing, I, I push those in as well. Um, I try and make my um, my virtual meetings during certain times as well. So that once again, it gives us this consistency because the consistency allows us to understand and feel the work. It allows us to remain uh, stable in it. I think have confidence in it and just allows us to excel at it. Um, that's how, you know, even if you talk to every child psychologist out there, they're going to be the ones to tell you on a, on a children's level that they need the consistency. The reality is, 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 is in our situation right now, which is definitely not what we're used to. That's what we need as well. So I think that there's never been a more important time in most of our careers than the consistency that's going to help thrive us. So with that, in this shipping environment where things are changing, you've got certain things that you're continuing to do, the habits you have in place. And like you said, you're in some cases being even more stringent with that, but we've had to modify things. So what are the things that you've had to change or modify based on where we are today? Well, if I were gonna break that down into three groups, first and foremost, um, I think the research element has gone through the roof. The reality is, is our market and our world is changing on an hourly basis. So the amount of research and education that I'm doing on a daily basis is scheduled at somewhere between an hour and a half to two hours minimum per day. Um, that can be through webinars, that could be through the great content that you guys have been providing. The company's been putting out a lot of great insights, a lot of great articles. Um, that could be through other market research I'm doing. I'm reading a tremendous amount of articles from different sources, but first and foremost, we need to be that, we need to educate ourselves from that perspective. The next piece is, is obviously a lot of the things that we were doing face to face have now become virtual. So our showings, um, we have protocol in place for all of our showings now. They all go through virtual elements before anything face to face is even considered. We're doing virtual opens. We're doing virtual, instead of doing sit down initial meetings with people, we're doing virtual conferences. So everything face to face that can be done virtually now is. And everything that used to be virtual has now gotten a more personable element. So for example, I used to sit down and meet with a new buyer. We'd have a great talk. We'd set them up on a search and we'd let them kind of look through and educate themselves a little bit on the market. And then we'd get out and see stuff because we don't have that ability to educate when we're out there. I'm now, after I send them some listings, I'm scheduling a time for 30 minutes, 60 minutes, whatever, whatever we can figure out to get on a zoom conference, to pull up the listings, to walk through the listings piece by piece to show them things on the listing sheet that they're probably not seeing, to use my experience to help them understand the property a little bit better. So that reality, it's not us walking through the property, but I'm adding guidance, reassurance, confidence to my clients in a time where they need it more. So anything that is, was face-to-face -face is now virtual and anything that was virtual is now more, more personable. So it's really about becoming very creative, right? And having to kind of change or, or pivot in this new environment. So we've all had to adapt and we've also had to, you know, kind of look at how to channel our creative spirit. So what are some of the unique things that you're doing to continue to engage your clients and your sphere of influence right now? Well, I think my, some of the things that I'm doing, it, it kind of started as a little bit of a personal emotional reaction. Um, on Friday, I think it was March 20th, um, when the executive order got released, um, I had a little bit of an emotional reaction to it. I was very just overwhelmed, um, personally, business, professionally, just on all aspects. I just, it was, it was a, a shock to me. Um, and that night I got on and I did a five minute video, um, a little bit of just an outpouring. At first I kind of did it for myself, not necessarily knowing if I was going to release it. And then I decided I was going to release it um, just because I started to think about it. And the video was a way for me to connect uh, with a tremendous amount of people on a very personal basis. Um, so I, I did that video just to kind of say, hey guys, this is gonna get tough, let's band together. And, and you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be your, your source here. I'm gonna help, help everybody through it. That became an evening, uh, a, a nightly occurrence now. So every night now I do a video that um, goes out to my social media spheres. Uh, it also gets posted on YouTube um, from that perspective. It's a way for me to be very personal. It's a way for me to, to show myself as a leader in the market. 
Um, and it's great. I post them every night. And in the morning, I wake up to this amazing reaction from people, either with personal questions about things that are going through them. Sometimes it's just a thank you. Just you are so calming and so reassuring. Like I really, I listen to you and I, I just feel better from where we're at. So those have been something that I put into place, which has had a great reaction. I've also tried to step up my interview game, which some of it's come out of the videos. I had some clients that took the videos and forwarded them on to Fox News. So I had a segment on Fox News the other morning. I've had some other things come out of it, but really trying to up my video uh, game, so to say, so that I can be connecting with a mass amount of clients, people, friends, family, um, on a consistent basis with a very personal level. That's really great. I think it's really interesting how over the last you know, a few things you've said, how more things have moved towards virtual, but at the same time, things have moved more towards the personal. Um, it's really interesting. So we'll talk more about that. But I think shifting gears into something that I've heard that's a fear among brokers and whether they've gone through previous downturns uh, or previous challenges, one of the fears that I'm hearing is that anytime there's downward pressure in the market, be it financial markets or real estate market, they're afraid of consumers coming to them asking for concessions, asking for reduced commissions, asking to waive fees or for us to contribute in some way to their transaction. What would you say to that, to an agent who's voicing those fears? I actually don't think those fears are overly relevant. Um, the fact of the matter is, we're getting into a time in real estate where it's gonna be more difficult to sell homes. It's gonna cost more money, it's gonna take a lot more advice and counsel, and everything that we do has to be elevated. It's actually going to be a time in which I think people tend to value their real estate advisors more than more than ever because they know it's not a market that it's easy to get through. Heck, if you can even sell a house, which is a challenge, getting it to a finish line is an even greater challenge these days. So I personally feel like most consumers are going to see more value in their real estate advisors instead of less. That being said, I always know that there are people that are going to be very monetarily based that are going to look at the bottom line and say, gosh, I feel like I'm making less, even though personally another conversation for another day, I don't think home values are going down very much, but people are going to be nervous. They are going to come after you. Uh, I have a couple of very simple answers. Um, the one that I've always used is the one that's true. Uh, in my 18 plus years of doing this, I've never reduced a commission. Um, for me, it's a little bit of a moral piece. I feel like everyone should have my services for the same price, and I don't think that I should discount it for one person and not the other. So I morally don't feel correct in discounting my services for one, especially in a very strongly referral-based business model, because if I reduce it for one person and then their best friend works for me and they find that out, well, then I've really shot my business in the foot. Now, if somebody's not comfortable saying that, I would very much go back to the other piece of saying, I really appreciate the question. That being said, you're asking me to sell your house in a time that is going to take a tremendous amount of time, a tremendous amount of energy, a tremendous amount of strategy, and a tremendous amount of financial investment for me. And I don't think right now that is an appropriate time for me to be cutting resources. And I just, I, I don't feel like I can do that for you and still perform the way you need me to work. Um, and once again, I think that most people at that aspect, they're going to realize that they, they need you. Um, so I think you're going to do great with that. You know, I think that's so right on. I think it's so important for brokers to really remember the value of what they're bringing to the table. And, you know, they need to own that. And I think that confidence goes such a long way. So I want to circle back to, you know, past markets that you've been in and then applying this to kind of the current challenges. If a broker is uncertain about how to proceed, what are two things you would recommend they should be doing to come out of this stronger? Well, I think it's important for us to remember that in a time like this, as agents, as brokers, we have probably the most captive audience that we've ever had in our careers right now. I mean, even if I go back to September 11th, even if I go back to the market crashes, there has never been a time that I personally in my career have felt like I've had a more captive audience because people are literally trapped in their homes, half of them not working. In addition to that, we are at a time in which homes are more important than ever. Um, so I think that has to be definitely at the backdrop of what we're talking about. So if I think about that, the first thing that I think everybody should be doing is becoming an educated market leader. 
that, that in itself will allow us to do all the rest of the pieces, but we have to be able to articulate what's going on. We have to be confident about what's going on. We have to be able to, to give our clients, our peers, our family that calm, so to say. That's kind of what, I, what I'm inspired by, by being that calming factor. And so there's a lot of different places you can get those resources. Um, the company, as I said before, is sending out great content. Keeping Current Matters, um, I've been a, a huge fan of, of Steve Harney for years. Um, I've known the whole Harney family for probably almost 20 years now. Um, and they are right now offering up um, free content uh, in addition to some of their paid stuff. I'll tell anybody that I think for whatever it is, the $20 a month, it's one of the best investments you can do in your business. Um, I think CNN's had some great content. Leading RA has had some great webinars. Uh, Curbed, I think, has put out a few great articles. Um, the New York Times, Chicago Cranes Business. There's just a lot of places out there to be getting content. And a lot of them right now are offering discounted or free subscriptions. Um, so it's something that you can, you can educate yourself with no monetary investment at all. I think that that's really important for us. Now, then I think you have to do the second part. You need to figure out how to communicate and how to connect with with your clients on that. Now, once again, the communication and the connection, this is all technically a free aspect as well. Nothing has to be paid in this. So I look at it from two levels. First and foremost, I have to reach out to the large sphere as I can, because you want to hit as many people as you can, and you can't do that all on the personal level. So how can I reach with the loudest voice possible to the most amount of people, but still keeping it personal? The company's been putting out some great content in terms of the, um, the e-cards and stuff like that. So I think that those are great things. You know, when I've been doing my own stuff like that, I usually start with an apology. I'm sorry if this feels informal, but I wanted to touch base with as many of you as I can possibly. I will be following up in the coming weeks. So just kind of putting that stuff out. And I think that needs to be fairly consistent. And that goes from the social media aspect. Well, for me, it's the videos. For other people, it can be different things. Then obviously you need to find a way to connect personally um, or as personal as you want it to feel personal. So for example, I've got a list of all of my uh, first time buyers and I've got a list of all my landlords and I've got a list of all my uh, move up buyers and I just keep those together so that when I stumble upon a great article that's relevant to them, I copy and paste the same email over and over again that says, hey, Jim and Susie, I read this article today about you know what to do with your tenants during tough times. Just wanted to forward it on to you because I thought it was really relevant. By the way, how are you guys doing? How's everything? Um, are all the tenants paying? Let, let's connect. Let's chat. First time buyers, I send something out. Hey guys, I know this is scary. Here's this, here's this article. Whether it's text, um, I think, you know, I know a lot of us are home with our kids. Uh, my littlest one who's three, I still have to go to the point where I have to sit down with her for 30 minutes when she lays down for her naps. I use that 30 minutes to be doing personal text to clients, writing handwritten notes, whatever you can do to connect with people, that's the important thing. And I think the greatest thing about it is I know as all of us as agents, we've had to just admit that in the next few months, we aren't going to make what we had anticipated. That's, that's the reality of it. I have to say that everyone has to say that that's just part of this market. I strongly believe we're going to come back with a huge bang, but for right now we have to do that. And I don't think that there's anything that I'm recommending anybody do that has really a price tag other than personal investment and, and work. That's great. Thank you, Amanda. I think one of the things that uh, one of the goals we should all have to your point is, you know, what are the things we're doing, paid or not? What are the things we're doing to come out post-pandemic stronger than we went in pre-pandemic? And we know that there's going to be a hit on income. We know that there's going to be a hit on our business. But what are we doing? What are the steps we're taking to continue to connect with people in a personal way? And you shared so many great ideas today. Um, I really appreciate it. So thank you. Uh, one thing I want to remind everybody is, as we wrap up, uh, two things is that if you want to see another coffee with Amy and Kevin that you maybe missed, uh, we do have a YouTube channel now put up. So this video, if you watch it today and then you want to see it again in the future, you can go to our YouTube channel, Coffee with Amy and Kevin. Um, I, I hope that Amanda will join us again in the future um, on, the, on another episode. So thank you for joining us. And then lastly, if you do have any suggestions or anything uh, that you need clarification on, any comments, or certainly um, when it comes to topics, any ideas you might have, please share them with us at, at coaching at appproperties.com. So we're signing off. Thank you, Amanda, for your time and your great insight. And thank you, Amy. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thanks for having me.